Good morning everyone. Very happy new year to you all. Welcome to another year of Dodd's Diaries and videos. I'm in now to me, I think, seven and a half year now. That's the half year I started in 2012 and then the full years I've been doing since 2013. Anyway, today, this is episode 84. Today is Thursday the 30th of January 2020. Sounds like it's going to be a big year, 2020. I've got a thing, 2020 vision. What am I going to do this year? Am I going to get to anywhere special? But then, I'm only going to be out a few times this year now. I am getting a little tired these days doing these outings. I've done them so many times now that I know the wonder I've half retired from this hobby. But anyway, still here, still growing. <coughs> Time is coming up to 6.36 in the morning and today going to, for the first journey of 2020, going to East Yorkshire. So I'm going to travel down to York and then I'm going onwards to Hull, officially known as Kingston upon Hull. And then I'm actually travelling to Cleethorpes, Seaside Resort. But not going to play Forbes on the train, although, well, actually I'm doing the train, but a bit different. There's two reasons for this trip. One, to have a ride across the, fel the famous Humber Bridge, which was the longest suspension bridge for many years. One of my work colleagues is from around that area, and he's recommended it to us. Right, we're in front, that is. Uh, as early as uh, Tachi Azuma going to Kings Cross. That's one thing I can expect this year them trains replacing the uh, Class 91 225s. Although I've been told some have been at least kept. The HSTs are no longer around up here. There's going to be more of them around now. Anyway, where was I at? Oh, yeah, back to Hull. So I'm going to travel across the uh, Humber Bridge today, which I've not done before, by, on, on a bus. And also, while I have done Brimsby at Clay Forbes, I did that in 2017, I haven't done Barton on Humber down to Clay Forbes on the Northern, and that's what I'm going to do. And then that just clear, that means I've cleared that section of the line. I'm going to travel on the 0652 Manchester Airport service to get to York. Back in December, there was another timetable change here. Uh, we no longer have the early morning Liverpool trains. We still have return ones late night. We've actually now got a direct service to Edinburgh and back as well. But that's not running at the moment because uh, TransPennine have been uh, having all sorts of problems with trains. Late delivery, crew training, there's actually a lot, a lot of trains going to and from Liverpool cancelled, quite a few Edinburgh services cancelled as well. Yes, they in actually increase, they extend it from Newcastle up to Edinburgh back in December. So I'll be travelling on one of them trains one day, up to there on them. So all in all, it's not been too good for them, but I think it's meant to improve in the next month or so. Now I'm hoping this train will be one of uh, TransPennine's new Nova 1 Attache Class 802 fleet. I went on one just to get a Durham last year when I went on my holidays. Right, let's enjoy today. It's the early morning 0648 to Northern to Carlisle coming in. And that just happens to be class 158. Brilliant, that's 158861. I love the sight of class 158. That's a Voyager gone past. That's just brilliant, that. Class 158 stopping at Chessie Street for me. 
That's a throwback to my early days of train spotting when I was a kid. The day when Arriva had the Trans Pennine franchise and when first had the 158 till 2007. Now trains due in a few minutes. Come see O652 Manchester Airport and yes it is a Nova 1 class 8 or 2 I think. Yeah it is. These are an absolute beauty, these trains. 802-218, this train. <laughs> the next stop for this service will be Durham. Welcome to this Transpennine Express service to Manchester Airport. These trains do get up the speed very quickly. Amazing. Welcome to this Trans Pennine Express We're just coming into York now. I would love to live in one of these houses around here. Now these trains are by mode. They run electric and diesel. So what this train will do at York, it will transfer onto diesel power. It'll be probably all the way to Manchester before it goes back to electric. Fine. 
That's the river ooze. Nice to So here I am at York Station, my favourite, it's now 7.52. The train I'm getting to run to Hull is, just check my notes, is at uh, 08.45. So I've got about a uh, about 50 minutes wait, so I might, I might do some spotting here. That was a brilliant ride. That's actually my first like, proper long ride on one of their new uh, Nova One trains. Impressive. And if you think there's actually less people standing on that train than what there would have been, that would have been a 185. If that was a 185, there'd be people standing. But now, five coaches now instead of three. More people seated down. Brilliant. And also, and them trains are even faster. Using my uh, GPS, uh, speedometer, tracker, 125 miles an hour exactly got up to on them. And the one eight, class 185s only get up to about 100 miles per hour, but them 125. I look forward to having more rides on them trains in the forthcoming years. It's a quiet morning this morning. Up here we've got Got a class, got a sit, got a 66, 66 there, and we've got a 57002 over there, and that is a class 144 Pacer coming in. I have a feeling that's just arrived from Hull, so that could be my train. Take me to hole this morning unfortunately them trains are supposed to be going as well as well as the normal 142s these were built after the 142s I think a year or two afterwards they say they have better slight better design All the class 144s by Northern are all based at uh, Neville Hill in Leeds. Down in Wales, they've got class 143s, Wales and Great Western Railway areas. Now in the news about Northern, uh, just the day before I filmed this, the Northern franchise is getting renationalised. It's going to be uh, Northern Trains Limited. Now that'll be brilliant, taking back the public ownership. To be honest, it'd be better if the whole railway franchise system was just abolished altogether. Meantime, this is 
one of Trans Pennine's new Nova 3 fleet going to Scarborough. These are Mark 5 carriages, and on the rear, that is a 68 on the back. 68 or 25 on the back of them. And they look very impressive indeed. Now with regards to the 185s, they're still running, not many of them around. What they plan to do is obviously they'll retain about 16 or so. And if Trans Pennine Express get the uh, route from Liverpool to Nottingham from 2021, that will be used on that sister, on that route. Right, I'm going to rest for a little bit and then onwards to Hull. So it looks like this is going to be my train to Hull, a 144 Pacer, doing the 0845 service. Alright, I'm on one of uh, Neville Hill's finest Class 144 DMUs, due to Hull about just after 10 to 10. And because I've got an advanced ticket, I can't get off at Brook and change there. Not like I did in 20, can't do what I did in 2015. Never mind.
the ambulance. Right, it's 10.07 and here I am in Hull, officially known as Tinkton upon Hull. They say it's never dull in Hull, but looking at the sky, it is. This is my first spotting session of 2020, and let's have a look. Here we have one of First Hull Train's new Hitachi Class 802s. These are known as Paragon Trains. So LNER call their Zoomers, Trans Pennine call their Novas, Hull Trains call them Paragons. Named after Paragon Interchange, of course. 158759 there, another Trans Pennine in the platform. And there's a Class 144 down there. These are Class 180s. And these were originally with First Great Western back in the day. So the plan is, I'm going to do about an hour here, 
Bournemouth, look around the sea. And then I'm going to be catching the bus from uh, Paradigm Interchange, from the bus side of things, from over there to Barton on Humber. That'll take us across the Humber Bridge. There's two bus services. Well, no, they go across the Humber Bridge. The 250 and the 350 Humberside Flyer and the Fast Cats. And I'm going for the Humberside Flyer. That's what I've planned for today. One of my mates was on that train, Ricky Noah's, travelling from, uh, from Scarborough to Sheffield. Hatchie's new trains, I think, are amazing. Definitely, this is the future of intercity rail travel. I can see these trains being introduced on more and more main lines. It'll be on the uh, Midland main line soon. Also, uh, Avanti West Coast are planning to take some on the uh, West Coast main line as well. I think Greater Angular as well. 
Yeah, and definitely see them being introduced on more lines. They're much better than these Class 180s. We just brought it back to 2001. When these trains were introduced, there were a whole load of uh, software problems with them. I remember watching the videos about them. These are still these are with first hull trains and also Grand Central still operate class 180s as well. The name Areva on Northern's trains that will be disappearing from March when it gets nationalised by the government they become Northern Trains Limited. Right I'm going to finish it now. Done enough. I'll be back here this evening from about 25 to 7 and onwards for a couple of hours. So I'll do some evening footage. I'm going to go and look around the city before I uh, jump on the bus to get across the River Humber to Barton on Humber station. So here we are in Hull city centre. We'll have a walk towards the Humber. We'll have a look there. Right. So here I am at a Hull Marina. This is the River Humber. Quite a wide River, I should say. It's like all the Docklands area, Docklands area, and that. There, yep, there's a PO ferry, so that's where you get the ferry to, I think, like Amsterdam as well. So, in the distance, over that way, there is the Humber Bridge, which I'll be going across soon. Quite cold here today. So the river's flowing quite fast as well. Well, they say, they say never, never dull in Hull, but it is quite dull today. Just over there, that's the uh, Princess Key shopping centre. Came past that way to get to here. I like it here. I think I'll be coming back here tonight. Definitely. Now, there's a few well-known music bands I know from here. You may remember the House Martins. They're from here. One of them, Norman Cook, is of course known as uh, Fat Boy Slim now. Uh, the other one, the lead singer. went on the front beautiful south part of my childhood house plants had hits such as uh, Happy Hour and uh, Caravan of Love uh, a cover of Caravan of Love beautiful south had uh, hits such as uh, A Little Time Song for whoever uh, and of course I had Rotterdam and Don't Marry Her Perfect Ten I remember that one they were good bands, indeed. And also, 
everything but the gel is from here as well. Late singer, Tracy Fawn. They had, they did a cover of uh, I Don't Want to Talk About It in 19. It was in, I think it was in the, it was in the late 80s, I think 89. And perhaps the most famous single was uh, Missing, which was out in 1995. Classic uh, disco tune that. Like the desert miss the rain, and I miss you. Close oh. like that. That's one song for uh, my friend uh, Jack Newell to get stuck in his head. So I've had a good day today. I've done an hour at Paragon Interchange so far, getting old trains near class 802s, Trans Pennine 185s. They're still using 185s over to here. Getting Northern's trains as well. I like the Hitachi. I like the new Hitachi trains, whether it's 800s, 801s, or 802s. So far, they're in operation with um, LNER, Trans Pennine, and of course, Great Western Railway. And first hold trains. There'll be more and more companies that will be uh, getting them. Probably nearly everywhere will get them. So anyway, it's 2020. What can I expect this year? I need to try and think of some destinations that I haven't been to before I get to. Holidays? Well, I have got a couple of places in mind where I want to get to abroad this year. Trains? What can we expect? Um, well, there's been announcements. I've got new, the new trains in Merseyside are coming this, I think it'll be this year, yeah, next year. New trains in the Tannaway Metro have been announced. Um, Northern's just uh, gonna be they're going to be losing the franchise and that's going to take the pub into public ownership. Uh, Brexit is also happening the day after today as well. What else is going to happen big in 2020? This has to be a big year. I'm thinking 2020 vision. Right, let's walk this way towards Paragon Interchange. Uh, this is nice, we've got uh, some flags of the Commonwealth up here. That is, uh, that's France, Germany, there's the Union Jack, that's the Netherlands, Belgium, and that one, that's Iceland. Iceland's meant to be a nice location. That's the country, not the store, by the way. A volcanic island, capital Reykjavik, that's good. Also, no Iceland for beating England 2 1 in Euro 2016. We embarrassingly lost to them. And that reminds us another thing in 2020, we've got Euro 2020 this year as well. That's going to be a classic uh, football tournament, I think, this year. Right, I'm back at Paragon Interchange. So what I'm going to do now is catch a bus, Stagecoach 250, known as the Humberside Flyer, goes to Humberside Airport. Catch that to uh, Barton on Humber, take about half an hour ride, take us over the Humber Bridge, leaves at 12.55, then I'll be collecting onto uh, Northern from Barton down to Clay Forbes. I'm just, the ticket I'm just getting, the cheapest ticket was an East Midlands Day Out ride. £9.30. I think this will be the last time I do this ride because that, that's a bit steep, that price, if I'm honest. Anyway, 
We'll solder on. This is a hearing hole. Nearly stagecoach and West Midlands, East Yorkshire. Motor services operate down here. You can actually get a bus, I think, to Scarborough from here as well. Anyway, let's go down the line.
Okay, so I've come across to the other side of the Humber. This is Barton on Humber station. As you can see, it's not really nothing special about it at all. It's just a basic single platform and a couple of seats in a shelter just over there. Over there is the bus. That's what I've got to here. A stagecoach Enviro 200. That's the 250. That's going to Humberside Airport. Some of them continue on to Grimsby and Cleethorpes, but it would have took a lot longer on the bus to get there. Now the trains here, it's pretty basic, only every two hours. So the next train's at 10 to 2, and that's what I'm getting down to Cleethorpes. I'll be there. Um, we get to the seaside, due there at 14. 44 and then I've got a couple of hours there before I come back up It's be the 1350 to Cleethorpes. Well, this one's just arriving from Cleethorpes. It's a single carriage class 153 Get the seaside at 1444 Holland. On this line it's an example of what's called a token system. Most of it being single line. So the driver there will get the token from the signaler. On this occasion she will collect it going to Barton and coming back hand it back to the signaler.
Mr. Hey Barbara. This is where the uh, the line from uh, Barnaby Stone Fort Doncaster joins just before here. now 10 to 3. Here I am in the seaside town of Cleethorpes. But unusual to be somewhere like here in January. It is quite cold. Anyway, I've got under two hours here to enjoy some of the sea air. Just had a good ride here on 153 328 here. But we're getting here a bit late. It's part of the parcel having a lot of track single line. You like mainly like here to Grimsby and then further up. Like if one train is late either end, it can have a knock on effect. This northern goes out at 5 2, 
There's a Trans Pennine coming in. That northern will grow out once that Trans Pennine has come back, come into here. Here's a Trans Pennine arriving late. And because this is arriving late, it means northern behind me is running late. We'll have to let run late as well. Okay, so here is the seafront at Cleethorpes, east in East Lincolnshire. We are just inside the mouth of the River Humber. In the distance, Hull and all that is up there. I'm going back over there later. Now, obviously, we've been January. A lot of attractions, fish and chip shops, and that are shut. All them along there, for example. Obviously the ferris wheel shut for maintenance. Looks like the pier there is open. But at least some amusements are still open, so I can still get some maybe some fish and chips perhaps and some ice cream while I'm here. I go back up to Hull at on the five to five train. Not back to Barton on Humber on the five to five train and then I catch the bus back over to Hull Paragon Interchange. I'm going to enjoy a nice time at the seaside. Mm.
Uh, I've now been fed. Just had the great British classic fish and chips in this restaurant here. Papa's fish and chips. Absolutely delicious. A large card and chips was £10.49. And I think that's probably the best card and chips I have ever had. Definitely recommend this restaurant. 10 out of 10 from me. The fish was just so fresh, just clean. The chips were just so crispy, just lovely and soft in the middle. Oh, just salute to die for. Yeah, that's, def that's definitely one chip shop I do recommend. In the meantime, I've got just under an hour here before I go back up to Humberside. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to catch the 16.55 Northern back to uh, Barton on Humber. Now, although it's using Northern stock, staff, it's, it's actually Transport and Express that's been running the stock, running the trains. I don't know why. So they're back to Barton at quarter to six. Then onto a bus uh, just after six o'clock it takes us back across to across the Humber to Hull and back there at 25 to 7 tonight and I've had a good couple of hours here in Clay Forbes Let's see look around it's right dead a lot of, a lot of things are shut that fantasy world a large amusement arcade okay, that's just closed just now I think this is one of them resorts where in the winter time it's it, like most everything's nearly everything's closed and things will shut like the tea time there's literally only a few a few resorts in the winter time in the, in the UK that'll be open for quite a bit like Blackpool and Brighton and Scarborough and that the more popular ones
spit.
And now on to the 250 bus idle. It takes about two minutes, usually.
leaves. Right, here I am back at uh, Hull. This is a uh, Paragon interchange. It's uh, quarter to seven. I've been back here about 10 minutes. I'm going to do an evening session here, probably for the next 50 minutes or so. That'll be badge, no problem. Quite windy out here, and this keeps flapping about and hitting us on the face and that. But you have to wear them when you come here. You've signed in on platform two over there, supervisor's office. And they're always lovely stuff. So, we still have them two class, first whole trains class 180s over there. Got a 158, two, got a Northern 158 there, free coach one. Uh, a 155 set there. I'm hoping it's a sprinter at least that'll take us back to York. And then there's a Transpennine 185 there.
Right, time to go and sign out now. I think I'll head back to the quayside. Just for a little bit. Before coming back here. Right, come back to a whole marina and looks uh, lovely lit up at night time. I'm not going to go all the way to the Humber this time. Now, of course, there's a, a couple of uh, light shows that have been going on back in the city centre, which I'm going to go back and have a look at. I've seen a lot of uh, pubs and all that around this area. Apparently Hull's meant to be a thriving place for nights out. I believe this is the uh, 2007 uh, City of Culture. I think so. I know that Liverpool was 2008, I think. I'm having a drink there. It's actually not dull now. It's now clear as well. Now I think I'm going to turn round, head back towards the station, looking at them light shows. I may as well tell you the journey plan, going back home. So I'm getting the 2050 Northern back to uh, York, get there at 22 or 8. 
and I've got an hour's wait, so I probably might, I could do a, a session at York. Then I'm on the 23 08. Get back to Chesley Street at about half midnight. A long day it has been, but it's been a good one. Let's just hope I have no trouble getting home, no overhead wire problems this time, which has happened on the last couple of outings. Well, it's happened coming back from Glasgow and it happened coming back from Paris as well. I just hope I have no overhead wire problems this time. This is an impressive light installation. This is what's called the Oracle. Now apparently it's all weather themed. It looks very good indeed. There's a couple of impressive displays. We've got some beaming lights coming out there. It reminds us of uh, Blackpool, actually. Actually, not well, sort of Blackpool and Paris as well, at the top, beaming over. These are like shining crystals. But these actually remind us of Mirrorball in Blackpool. Sounds very enchanted to me. That was perfect timing, came out in the station. That is the LNER Zuma, that was the arrival from London King's Cross, and now that train's heading back, it's heading to Doncaster. This is my train in York, 20 to, uh, 2050 service, and I have last one, five, five. That's better than the pace that I had this morning.
just left Hessel. There's the Humber Bridge. You can only really see the outskirts of the pillars, lit in red. That was a brilliant ride. It was a brilliant, that was a brilliant ride across the Humber today. about two minutes going south to get over it, but coming back took about four minutes. It's got a speed limit of 50 miles per hour and a toll. Now our next stop is Ferriby. Also served by LNER Azumas. This and rough before going to Hull.
Newcastle network really decided to uh, have the train in 5B. Right, so I'm back at York. It's now coming up to quarter past ten. Uh, for some reason, uh, Network Rail decided to bring the 155 on this platform here. Don't know why. I've got one more train journey to draw, 2308 back to Cheshire Street. But there's a problem. It's running 45 minutes late. Uh, unfortunately, what happened was... It was, it ran late from Edinburgh, got Liverpool for like half an hour late, and then by the time they've done the crew, done the clean out, seat reservations, crew seat, change stuff, and all that, it's left there 45 minutes late. I trapped it just now, it's just left Newton Le Willows. I sincerely hope that they do not cancel the train here after all the depot it's just round round the corner it could happen I sincerely hope not it, it, it seems to happen with me the last couple of times now going home late at night I have a, such a good day and then it all grows a little pear shaped on the night time nearly every time I get a Trans Pennine from here at York it always runs late Oh well, I suppose it just makes for an excellent Dodds diary, I should say. Me and Trans Pennine just, just don't get on that well at all. Oh well, there's no point in us doing any spotting now because it's late and there's not really much more to run now here. So, I'll have to do something to kill some time. In the meantime, we've got 158 there. 170461. Now the 170s, these are ex Scott Rail class 170s. With Scott Rail with electrified lines in Scotland, typically Edinburgh, Glasgow, and like Falkirk and stuff and that. They didn't need these trains, so now these got cascaded to Northern. These operate like, they operate quite a few lines. They're on Harrogate line, they've also been on. Uh, Hull to Scarborough services like to Sheffield and all that. They're kind of good ride then. Well, seeing as though my train is severely delayed, what I may as well do is have a quick look at a little bit of a York City. What a beautiful city it is. So, this is the station here. My most favourite station, definitely. So, we'll have a walk round to, I think. Might get a drink. Maybe walk round to the punch bowl, which is at uh, Nickelgate, just round the corner. So this is uh, Middlegate, just round the corner from the station. And this is the punch bowl with a spoons. It's a little handy uh, solution to pass away the time. I fancy a drink in there while waiting for a delayed train. Well, that was one way to pass away the time. Nice pint of Carlin. The good stuff. Come back into the station. It's still running 45 minutes late. At the moment, it's just past Murfield. I'm now looking at getting back to Chester Street. It's going to be at least 1 o'clock in the morning when I get back to the station. Thankfully, I do have my car parked up at the station. So I'll just be driving straight home once I get there and then I'll do my outro tomorrow night because uh, I'm at work tomorrow at 11 o'clock. I can hear my bed calling for me.
Right, five to midnight and finally here comes my, well, my lift out of here. The late running 2308 service it is now 2357. I've, I've got a new Northern 1802. 212, take this home. Right, let's get out of here. Well, this here's a nice way to finish. That's the diesel engine stopping. Here's a nice way to finish the night. A ride on one of the new trains. to this Transpennine Express service to Edinburgh Waverley. This service will be calling at Thurs, North Allerton, Darlington, Durham, Chesterler Street, Newcastle and Edinburgh Waverley. The next stop will be Thurs. For your safety and security, this train is fitted with CCTV. Please keep your belongings with you or in sight at all times. If you notice anything suspicious, please speak to a member of staff or text the British Transport Police on 61016. If you see it, say it and we'll sort it. safety of everyone on board this train, please keep the aisles and doorways free of luggage or other obstructions. Please keep personal items off seats. These should be placed safely and securely in the overhead racks so that all seats are available for others to use. Transpennine Express service.
So I'm finally back at Chessie Street, five past one it is. I'm actually gonna do my video outro tomorrow night. For you, it's gonna be a few moments. For me, it's gonna be, I would say at least 18 hours, because I'm gonna be up nine o'clock in the morning. So, good night from this bit. Hello everyone. It's now 10, 10 past nine uh, on uh, Friday, 31st of January. Uh, obviously, when I got home, I should say earlier on this morning, I was too tired to do my outro, so I've just waited till now. For you, it's just been a few moments, but for me, it's been 20 hours. I've been to work today. Obviously, I'm back now. So, a review of first outing of 2020, and it's actually been a good one. <clears throat> so, started at Chester Street, got a... Train to York, one of Trans Pennine's new Nova 1 Class A or 2 Hitachi trains. My opinion, I absolutely am going to fall in love with them. The seats might just be slightly harder than the old uh, Mark IV carriages on LNER. But all in all, they're super fast, modern. We, we need, well, actually, it's about time we had some new trains and now we're getting them. Uh, the good thing with these trains, they run by mode, electric and diesel, so when they're on electrified lines, they'll use the overhead wires where necessary. And then on non-electrified lines, they just switch into diesel mode. So they're using less diesel than what other trains would have done. So I've got train to York, and then first pace of ride of 2020, it was actually a class 144. If I think the 144s are just a bit more com are a bit more comfier than 142s. When they built them, they were a little more upgraded. Seats are a bit more comfy as well. Um, I don't know if they'll get withdrawn yet. They'll probably keep them going for a bit more. Got one of them all the way to Hull. It's a nice ride going through. Church Fenton and Sherman and Elmer, then towards Selby Brough and then along the Humber into Hull. Did a Hull station to start with, I did for about an hour. <clears throat> Saw first Hull train's new Paragon Hitachi Class A or 2s. Quite a few companies have now got these trains. Obviously, LNER, Trans Pennine, first Hull trains, East Midlands Railway as well, they're getting them. Of course, South Eastern on the high speed one Javelin trains, they've got them as well. And also, I think uh, Vanti West Coast are going to be ordering them as well. I think many, many more are going to be ordering them. I had a quick look around Hull City to begin with. Nice place. Then went across the Humber Bridge for the first time. That's one of the. That was one of the reasons for this trip. Got the uh, bus 250 Humber Flyer to Barton on Humber. And then got the train from Barton on Humber down to Clay Forbes. That was the second reason for the trip. So the first one was to go across the Humber Bridge for the first time and to ride the Barton on Humber to Clay Forbes line. <coughs> it's operated by a single carriage Northern train. Although the staff, it's actually Trans Pennine Express staff that operate it. Takes about under an hour, stops at all the stations towards Grimsby and Clee Forbes. All the one, or there's one station that's just request a new Clee just before Clee Forbes. That's just a request stop. Clee Forbes, uh, the seaside town, it's a nice place. This time of the year, it's like a ghost town, there was like a ghost town, hardly anyone around. Had uh, probably the best fish and chips ever, and that was at uh, Papa's Fish and Chips on Clee Forbes Pier. Definitely recommend a visit to that. Once I was at a Clay Forbes, came back up the line. You do go for some, go through some like proper like industrial towns, particularly Grimsby, and then further up through docks and all that. I'm sure there's obviously a lot of a lot of uh, workers use that line to go to these places. As soon as I got back to Barton on Humber, got the bus 350 back over to Hull. Right across the Humber Bridge at night time was brilliant. Did another session, then went and looked around Hull City Centre. 
for a bit. So I did a, a light installation. It was called the Oracle. It was all to do with the weather. It looked pretty good. Then I got back into Hull Station and saw the LNER Zuma. I think I think it's still taught the Hull etc. I don't know. Hull etc. Arrival from King's Cross and then that train would go back to Doncaster. And then I uh, came back to York on a Northern Class 155, a refurbished one. Looked kind of nice, new seat covers and that, light blue. All in all, the day was going so well until the very end. Yet again, for the third time in a row, I have a little problem getting home. Once again, Trans Pennine Express. Well, it's not specifically, not particularly their fault this time. It's more to do with Mother Nature. The train I was getting from, train getting from York, back at Chelsea Street, 23.08. Unfortunately, it was going to be running, was running 50 minutes late. The train went from Edinburgh to Liverpool, but was delayed to, um, in Scotland because there was high winds that were causing temporary speed restrictions. So that train got to Liverpool half an hour late, and it was the same train that would have to come back up to Newcastle. Operating the 2118 from Lime Street back to Newcastle. So it left Liverpool 45 minutes late and then it got up to 50 minutes late coming up the uh, through along the Trans Pennine route. So it came at midnight and thankfully it made up some time because instead of just sticking to the slow lines heading up to first. It just went straight up the fast line. That made up some time, and because these trains get out to 125 miles per hour, as opposed to the 185s, which only go to 100, that helped it to make up more time. And I dropped back here at uh, 10 past 1 this morning. Well, thank you very much for watching this video diary. When will that be out next? I don't know. I am hoping to, I will be, still be going to some places this year 2020 and I will have a holiday once again me and my mum are still discussing where we're going but we have sort of narrowed it down a bit but there's more about that to come in the next few months or so well thank you for watching this and I'll see you in my next video diary good night